Back in episode 6, I explained to you the different types of linear mechanics, including ball screws, belt and pulleys, linear motors, and even rack and pinion. I get the question all the time, which one shall I use? And that could be a short conversation or a long one, depending upon the application. In just a moment, I'm going to give you a quick overview of a good, better, best approach between the first three of those. But first, I'm going to have Michael Renault give you some visual explanation of a couple differences. The HMR series is able to come as a belt-driven actuator or a screw-driven actuator. And we know these are belts based on how the motor is mounted to the actuator itself. If this actuator was a screw-driven actuator, the motor would be mounted in line with the axis of motion right off the end, or it would have a wraparound in parallel with the axis of motion. In belt and pulley actuator applications, most of the time we have to utilize a gearbox to match the inertia that is reflected back on the motor due to the low mechanical advantage that the belt actuator provides us. If these actuators were ball screw driven, we would not be able to back drive them. But because we are utilizing belts, I'm able to move them around freely. You'll notice though, I cannot move the Z axis. And this is due to the fact that when sizing this axis, we added a brake to our servo motor. This is because this is a belt and pulley vertical application. And if there was any power failure, we want to make sure that the load that our customer is utilizing does not free fall with gravity. Thank you, Michael. So you might remember these graphics back from episode six of the ball screws, belt and pulleys, and linear motors. And I promised you a quick, good, better, best overview of the differences between them. So here you go. The typical requirements are precision, speed, whether the application is vertical or not, and of course cost. Those are, tend to be the biggest priorities when we're talking about applications and loading and moment loading and some other things of course, but those are the ones we start with. Now notice here I have a good, better, or best applied to each of those priorities for each of those three linear actuators. Um, also notice here that where the belt and pulley say good for vertical it's by no means the better or best. Uh, linear motors and belt and pulleys just aren't great for vertical applications because the power goes out, they tend to drop like rocks. However, in this case, the priority of the speed was much higher than it being a vertical application. So Michael just showed you that we put a brake on it and so we were able to do that. Now, a brake on a linear motor is difficult, possible, but difficult. So perhaps we put a counterbalance uh, on there instead. Um, he also mentioned the back driving. Uh, linear motors, if he had done that back driving with a linear motor, they would have been really easy to move. The belt and pulleys have some friction, so they were not super easy to move around. Uh, the ball screws, they're still back drivable, but very difficult usually to do by hand, and, and unless they're under a high load. You really have to push against them. He may or may not have been able to do that by hand, depending upon the pitch of the screws. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, need some help putting an application together, making some decisions, reach out to us at valen.com.